Hello, for this lesson we're talking about fractions, decimals, and percents, okay? And pretty simple here, this is something hopefully you've worked with for a few years, uh, but if not, we're going to go through this some examples for this, okay? So, simply I have six problems here, it says make sure each value is written as a percent fraction and a decimal, okay? So it's already given us in one of those forms and we need to understand how to turn it into the, the other forms, okay? This is going to come in handy uh, a lot when we're working with different algebraic equations or different uh, formulas like exponential growth and decay where we don't want to multiply by you know percentages or we need to turn something that this is going to come in handy, okay? So, for number one, it's in percentage form already, okay? So we can turn this into a fraction, you can turn it into a decimal, okay? You could choose whichever one you want. Now remember, a percentage is something out of a hundred, right? If you have a hundred percent, you have a whole of something, right? If you have a hundred percent of a candy bar, you have the whole candy bar, okay? So a percentage is something out of a hundred, okay? And there are chances in number two, right? We have more than a hundred percent of something, okay? But number one, we've got 39 percent. So what that would mean is simply 39 out of 100, okay? So. Uh, so that's the fraction form. Does it simplify 39 over 100? Uh, does not simplify, okay? Then we also need it in fraction, or sorry, in decimal form. Well, to turn a percentage into a decimal, we just need to move the decimal two places, okay? And we can think of that even using this fraction here because any number divided by a power of 10, like any number divided by 10, the decimal is going to move one place to the left. So when we divide by 100, it's going to move twice to the left. And so we can see that is the, the, the case. And so we'd get 0 0.39 as our percentage. For number two, I have 220%. Okay, remember, well, um, you know, a percent is usually out of 100, correct? But this one's greater than 100. Well, for every 100% I have, that's going to be a whole number. So guess what? That's going to have a whole number of two because it's 200%, right? So, but I'm going to write it, you could write it as 220, right, over 100 first, and then that's going to simplify to two whole, and you'd have 20 over 100 left, and that simplifies to be two and one fifth, right? But remember, if you have a percentage that's greater than 100, for every 100%, it's going to be a whole number. So if you had 520%, it would be five and then 20 over 100, right? And then that'd be five and one fifth, okay? If it was 1,420%, that would be 14 as the whole number, okay? For every 100%, it's going to be a whole number. Now let's turn this into a decimal. Remember, all we have to do is move the decimal two spots to the left, okay, which would get us to 2.2, .2, right? The decimal would start here on the right side and one, two would get us between the two twos, okay? Three, I've got the 188, sorry, 1.88. I Sometimes my mind moves so quickly, I was already reading off the percentage. Okay, for a decimal to a percent, you move it two times to the right, which as I was saying before, when I read the problem, it's going to be 188%, okay? We could take another way, right? We need to do the fraction. We could take multiple ways to do the fraction. We could take this percentage and turn it into a fraction. We could take this decimal, right, and turn it into a, a fraction. There's lots of different ways to get there. Uh, but so what I'll do is I'll just take what was given, okay? Well, one is my whole number, and then it's 0.88, okay? This is in the hundredths place. I look at the last decimal place value, it's in the hundredths place, which means it's 88 over 100, okay? Let's say if, if it went to another eight, it was 888, okay? And it went to the thousandths place. Guess what would be in our denominator? A thousand. But since we had our last decimal place value in the hundredths, that's what goes in our denominator. And then can we simplify this? Well, I know it can be simplified by four, okay? It can be simplified by four. Four would get us to 22 over 25, okay? So there we go, and, and 22 over 25 is not going to simplify anymore. For this next one, I've got 
uh, four for four, it's 403 over 1,000, okay? So what could we do here? Usually when, when my denominator is not 100, if my denominator is 100, it's really easy to turn into a percentage. But if it's not 100, I'm probably going to turn it into a decimal first, okay? Well, 403 divided by 1,000, that's going to get me my decimal, okay? Just work it as a division problem, 403 divided by 1,000. That's going to get us our decimal value. So what that's going to get us is 0 0.403, okay? You could work that out. You could plug it into a calculator. But we could also use that power of 10 rule, okay? This is 10 to the third power. So dividing something by 10 to the third power, it's going to move the decimal three places to the left, okay? So it's going to be 0 0.403. From there, since it's a decimal, that's easy for me to turn to, into a percentage. I move the decimal two places to the left. It gets me to 40.3%. Don't forget, if you're writing something in percent, you need a percentage sign. Okay. For number five, I've got two fifths. Okay. So for this one, uh, we're going to go into a percentage and a decimal. And there's, there's a couple of ways we could do it. So first of all, like we just did here, we could do a division problem. Okay, I could do 2 divided by 5, and that's going to get me 0 0.4. Okay, 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4. That's a decimal, okay? Another way we could do it, another way we could do it is we could say, hmm, could I get this to a power of 10? Right? Well, I could multiply it by 2 over 2, and that would get me 4 tenths, okay? There we go, 4 tenths. That's exactly what we got here. Okay, so we found our decimal here. Okay, and we know there are a couple ways we could do it. So a division problem or turning it into an equivalent fraction with right, a power of 10 as a denominator. Now let's turn this into a percentage. Again, there's a couple ways we could do it. Let's do it first with our decimal. That's easy. Two spots to the right. Okay, four. If it started on the left side of that four, one, two, and I have to add a zero, so it's 40%. Another way we could do it. Let's work with that fraction. Remember, a percent is out of 100. So if I could get my denominator to be 100, then that would allow me to easily turn it into a percentage. Well, 20 times 5 is 100. So I would have to multiply my numerator by 20 also. I'd get 40. Well, guess what? It's 40 hundredths. So that means it's 40%. So again, we see there are lots of different strategies you can use to get these things. Okay, You simply need to understand them. Okay, utilize them. You can go different ways. You could turn that fraction into a decimal, that decimal into a percentage, or you could just work with that fraction to get it to the percentage. Lots of options. Okay, here we go. Number six. I've got 0 0.16, so I need this as a fraction, and I need it as a percentage. Well, percentage is easy. Two spots to the right, okay? So I get 16%. Okay, two spots to the right. It was here. One, two. Gets to the right side of that six. I need it also as a fraction. Well, it's Again, 16, and it's over 100 because that 6, that's our last decimal place value. Okay, it's in the hundreds. Does that simplify? It simplifies by 4. So let's do, well, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. And I get 4 25ths. Okay, so there are some examples of how you can turn fractions and decimals and percents into the different forms.